from uh, the brother on the side. Return to say. Uh, my question is, how do you answer a non-Muslim who's questioning Islam? Okay, good. Non-Muslims ask all sorts of questions about Islam. First thing you should know about questions from a media and, and uh, a media studies point of view is the person dictating the questions is the person dictating the direction of the discussion. Okay, if you know, if, if a talk show host knows what they're doing, they can bring a guest on the show that is of a completely opposite point of view and make them look like complete idiots. How? Even that, if that guest knows way more than they do. What's the only key thing? You decide what questions to ask. As soon as you start hearing an answer you don't want to hear, change it to another question, then move on to another question, then move on to another question. If you study the Quran carefully, it is also, in addition to being guidance for humanity for all sorts of things, it is also guidance for how to do da'wah and how to deal with questions. You have the scenario in the Quran where certain people of the book came to the Messenger وسلم, and they tell him, well tell us who Jibreel is. Or tell us who the people of the cave are. Who sends you revelation? What is the reality of the ruh? What does ruh really mean? Right? And this, when he would answer one, they'd go to the next. He would answer one, they'd go to the next. And they would keep jumping from question to question to question. Now what happens in the beginning, you have a person that has a sincere question. Right? They genuinely want to know one issue of Islam, like we just were listening today. Well, why do you guys grow beards? Maybe it's a genuine curiosity. Okay? But then there's another kind of questioning of Islam. Why do your women cover? You start answering that in a convincing way. Well, why do you have beards? You do that, and then why do you? And then you keep going, going, going. And like the eleventh question is, why do you women cover? And you say, wait a second, that was question number one. You just this guy's just going around in circles. So Muslims have to be a little sharp in being able to tell: is this person really asking me this question, or are they just trying to run around in circles? We have to have that much street smarts, basically. But the the heart of the matter is this: when you are asked a question, especially a critical question, like you Muslims have this crazy law about fighting and killing everyone, or blah blah blah, something like that, right? I'm reminded of the story of Musa a.s. Musa a.s. walks up to Fir'aun in the middle of the court and says, I am the messenger of the Lord of the Worlds. Deliver Bani, and arsil ma'iya Bani Israel. Right? Deliver Bani Israel with me. Fir'aun looks at him and says, didn't I raise you as a boy? He changes the question, doesn't he? And then he says to him, uh, you know, didn't you do that thing that you did? What's he referring to? The murder that he committed, right? Didn't you commit that murder? Fir'aun is smart. He doesn't want to respond to the statement. He wants to change with other questions. So if you study that dialogue, you learn a lot about tangent questions. But if you study the responses of Musa, he gave brief answers to his tangent questions, but kept coming back to the central question. And it is really that central question that's the heart of my topic. When Muslims ask you, or non-Muslims ask you about any one issue of Islam, try to find a way of tying that back into one central discussion. Is the Quran the word of God? Is Muhammad the messenger of Allah? You, wanna, you want me to answer that question for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What makes you so sure he's a messenger? And that's an interesting question to non-Muslims, by the way. It is. But that's the question we want them to ask. All those other questions, are actually avenues, they're windows, but you want to get them to the door. Right? Now whether they accept Islam or not, that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you want the direction, the, the, the conversation to be directed in the proper direction, whatever questions they ask, your best response, for example, on the fighting issue. Well, it's in the Quran, and first of all, there's a specific context where it applies, but we believe it's absolutely true, because we believe that the Quran is the literal word of God, and Muhammad وسلم, is his final messenger, who didn't speak on his own behalf, he only spoke on behalf of the Lord of the Worlds, and we're absolutely convinced of that. Like he didn't make anything, any things up on his own. He didn't make that up at all. You want me to tell you why I'm so convinced? Right now, you've, what, what have you done? You've changed the direction of the discussion. And this is really how we change. We, we have to force the discussion into that direction. And really, it's not something that Muslim, non-Muslims are averse to. But this is something that we have to learn to do with all kinds of tangent questions that come our way. Like, you know, a, a woman is told, why do you wear hijab? She shouldn't say, because it protects my modesty. Or a Muslim man should say, well, because, you know, you have a shameless society and look at all the consequences, at least we have, our women cover up and they're humble, blah, 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 and the hair is a distraction, etc., etc. No, forget all that. Get, you know why? Because God told her to. Well, how do you know God told her? Because the Quran says, well, how do you know Quran's word of God? Let's talk. 
You see, what, you, what, you, what you're doing is you're forcing a different direction to the conversation. You want to take a written question? 